Hey everyone, Selena here, Selena Baku Crochet and American Crochet Association. This should be streaming on both of those platforms and hopefully you guys are watching it from anywhere. If you are watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. I'm making this video because I recently posted an Ask Me Anything thread in my group and I got some really fantastic questions there. So this is just a live video going through each one of those questions and answering them. Um, if you guys have any crochet questions, feel free to post them after I get through all of the ones in my community. I'm gonna go through those first. Then I'm gonna have an open floor for any uh, crochet questions you guys have. So keep them coming, all right? Okay, guys, so the first question that I see here comes from Crystal Nance. Crystal, thank you so much for posting uh, this question. She says, what are your top ways we can support the global crochet community and keep passing down the fiber arts that we love? Lady, you are speaking my language. Crochet is my love language. And um, one of the main reasons I started the American Crochet Association is to help crocheters help themselves so that crochet can be passed through the generations in better hands than we found it. And one of the main ways I think we can do that is just by um, better resources, um, better educational resources, especially in the crochet realm. So I love that crochet is this social thing that we do and we share. And um, speaking from self-experience here, um, I did not learn in a way that made it um, that made it accessible to me in a way that I could understand and pass it on. So even though I loved crochet and even though I was doing it forever, I didn't really know what I was doing. And that was because I didn't have enough um, of a baseline of education to really pass it on. So really just making sure that we have that baseline of education. We are universal. We are using universal standards and terms and formats um, because the more educated we are ourselves as we pass on crochet, we're only going to be passing it down in better hands. So um, I've got tons of resources, free and otherwise, workshops, courses, things like that at the American Crochet Association. Um, you guys can just do a quick Google search and find our .com or our .blog. Again, we have tons of free resources and we also have courses and workshops and professional development. So I'm just trying to do my part to make sure that that happens. So great question, Crystal. I'm so glad you asked. All right. Next question here is from Georgianne. Georgianne says, and Georgianne had some fantastic questions. I'm so glad she posted so many. Georgianne says, um, have you ever designed a crochet stitch or a combination type crochet stitch that wasn't anything you had ever seen? I really had to think long and hard about this question um, just because I've published a few books. I've published over 400 patterns. And so I really kind of had to think about all the things that I'd done. And no, I don't think that I've ever come up with a stitch combination or stitch type that I hadn't seen before. And as a matter of fact, that's not really my forte. It's not really something that I think about. And even when I was just kind of messing around and came up with a new, new to me stitch combination, it turns out, you know, I, I'd seen, you know, a, a slight variation of it before. So no, I, I haven't done that. Um, I love, uh, I have a lot of crochet stitch books and those are kind of the resources I use whenever I just need some inspiration sometimes. Sometimes I'll just kind of thumb through those stitch books to go, oh, I love that for a top or that'd be a great stitch to make a tote bag or something like that. So just developing and inventing new stitch combinations. I don't think I've, I don't think that's me. I don't think I've done that, but great question. I'm so glad you asked. All right, another question from George Ann. What is the most difficult pattern you have ever written? And what were the names of all the stitches used in that pattern? And can you also post a photo of that item? So I love this question. And I just wanted to pause right here to also say that any resource that I have, because there's tons of questions that I have resources for, I'm going to post them in the video description. So while I'm here live, there's not much of a video, not much of a video description, but afterwards, you know, give me a little bit of time and I'll update that with resources, including this one. So I really had to think about this question. What is the most difficult pattern I've ever written? 
And I'm going to take that in terms of difficulty of instructions. You know, what is the most difficult in terms of skill level and ability? And it, I don't know if it's my most difficult ever, but I just finished reformatting uh, the sundial motif and sundial throw. I actually, I have one right here. Let me show it to you. So as I was reformatting this pattern, because it's, you know, it's an oldie, you know, it's, it's, it's been around for a while, but I just reformatted it because a very good crochet friend of mine just put together a, uh, a chart for me. So there's a lot of patterns that I'm starting to get crochet charts for. And so I'm updating them. All right, so this is giant. The motif doesn't have to be this giant, but it certainly can be this giant. I just happened to use really big yarn because I thought, ooh, I'll make it like a pillow cover. So I think that this is probably one of the most difficult pattern instructions that I currently have, simply because the repeat for this um, is difficult. The corners are different than the sides, especially when you get up here, you know, it starts as a circle and then it transitions to a square. And in order to make that square shape, I had to have four corners. Those have to be much taller than the sides. And that's how you get that square shape. So therefore, um, and then, you know, it doesn't, st you know, I have to start it with a chain and then, you know, there's, I have to follow a stitch sequence before I actually get to the meat of the pattern, which is, you know, the stitch repeat. So because of that, as I wrote this pattern, I had to use asterisks, I had to use brackets, and I had to use parentheses. I had to use all three of those together within the same section of instructions, which for a lot of people, they're like, why are there so many symbols? Just tell me how to make this. And it's because of that. It's because there are certain sections that repeat themselves inside of sections that repeat themselves. So anyway, it's really fun to do. Um, it was not very fun to write. And I really had to work hard to make sure that the way I was writing those instructions was going to be easy for other people to follow along. So it's probably one of my most difficult ones currently that I can think of. And I'll definitely drop the link so you guys can uh, take a peek at that later. All right, next question. Shalia, I like this question and I'm going to leave this one in your hands, okay? The, the good people of the world watching this video. Will there be a springtime crochet along or summer crochet along? Love your patterns. Well, thank you, Shalia. I really appreciate it. I have to say that I have not hosted a crochet along under just Selena Bacher crochet in some time. I haven't done it in some time um, because I have been hosting uh, some mini crochet alongs over at the American Crochet Association for a while. So um, yeah, so I would love to host a crochet along for the Selena Baca crochet group. And I'd love to hear what you guys want to make. So if you guys have any suggestions or if there's anything that you're looking to make, just let me know and we'll put one together, okay? But you're right, we haven't done one in a while and maybe we're overdue. All right, next question is from Crystal Ice. Crystal Ice says, what is the hardest project you have ever encountered? What is the hardest project I've ever encountered? I feel like I had a, an answer for this. I, I, I really thought very hard about this before I went live and I looked through all the questions. And now I feel stumped again. What is the hardest project I've ever encountered? You know, I'm not even sure. I feel that, oh, this is, never mind. I remember my answer now. I remember now. I have, a dif I have difficulty with a lot of things because there's so many projects that I crochet. And, you know, what I like to do is, is take something that looks complicated or seems complicated. And I like to fine tune it and distill it down to, to where when you look at the instructions, you're like, that's it. Oh, okay. I can do that. So that's kind of what I work really hard to do. So therefore I feel like a lot of the things that I do, there's, there's a level of difficulty in it for me to kind of distill down. Um, but one of the hardest projects <laughs> Um, and, and in all fairness, this is not really a crochet project. You didn't specify. So, you know, what is the hardest project I've ever encountered? A couple years ago, Red Heart Yarn, uh, I used to write a lot of crochet patterns for them. Tons of, tons of them. Then they moved to Yarnspirations and they forgot all about me. That's fine. Give me a call, Yarnspirations. <laughs> 
Anyway, they moved to your inspirations and now they've got an in-house team. Um, but before they moved, they came up with the loop yarn. So it's essentially yarn with loops on the yarn. And what you're supposed to do with it is, is finger knit or just kind of, it's not even finger knitting. It's more simplistic than that. It's just, you know, kind of putting those together. And, um, when that yarn came out, Red Heart asked me to make a blanket with it. They asked me to design a blanket that had kind of like front post stitches and back post stitches. And which was really easy for me to do. I, the, the pattern was really easy to kind of to do and the sizing was really easy to do. But um, it was such a big blanket. I think it was at least 40 inches. And whenever you're doing finger loop knitting, you're essentially just taking 40 inches of yarn and then you're constructing those loops. But the, but the blanket has to be stationary. And the thing with looping, much like knitting, is that all the loops are unfinished. And if you move the fabric at all, then those loops could come undone. And so um, I started this and I realized that with kids and pets, I just did not have the space to work on this project. So I commissioned it out to my friend to finish it for me because I was like, I, I can't. I, I cannot with this. I don't have the time or the space for this. So she quickly did it for me in just a couple days. So that was very hard. And I'm so glad that I had a friend who, who knocked it out of the park for me. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. All right, next question. Before I read it, I just wanted to say, I see so many of you guys are here. So come on over, say hey, say hello. Tell me where you're viewing from. If you guys have any crochet questions, just feel free to post them. What I'm doing now is uh, I'm just answering all of the crochet questions that I got in my community this week. And so I'm just going through each one of those and I'm answering all those questions. After this video, I'm gonna update um, the description with all the questions that were asked and you know a little bit of resources on, or, or I'm gonna update and include some resources on the topics that I'm talking about today, okay? All right, next question is from Liz. Liz says, is there a good online store for yarn that doesn't have shipping or a low minimum? I've been spoiled with Amazon and can't stand paying shipping. I know, I kind of, that happens to me too sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, wait, shipping? What? Who is charging me shipping? Um, I'd love to hear what you guys say in the comments. So I'd love some feedback on this one. I typically, whenever I order yarn, sometimes I'm very intentional about the yarn that I need. I need it for a project. Um, or maybe I just want to order some new yarn because it's new and I just want to see it. So there's lots of different places that I do order yarn from, direct from the supplier like Yarn Inspiration or Lion Brand or Knit Picks. And sometimes I order from box stores like Joann's or Michael's, um, you know, even Walmart. I've, I've ordered from them before. And I find that what I do is I'll kind of, I'll wait for like a sale or I'll wait for a coupon. And that way, either I'm not going to pay shipping because, you know, there's free shipping over a certain price or something like that. Or I wait for some kind of discount and that way, even if maybe there's some shipping, there's there's a nice discount. So I feel like I'm, you know, I'm kind of getting that. Um, so I enjoy that. I enjoy kind of waiting for a sale. And if you guys have any places where you buy yarn that you love buying yarn from, let me know in the comments and we can get Liz some, some good uh, feedback. All right, next question is from Sherry. Sherry says, aside from asking all the wonderful people in this group, which is, you know, whichever community you're in for, you know, either American Crochet Association or Selena Bakker Crochet, is there a place where one can ask, for example, does this stitch already exist or what stitch is this? Um, that's a great question. And I will say that I think the groups that I run, uh, Selena Bakker Crochet or American Crochet Association, those are great places to ask those questions. Those are exactly the kind of questions that I hope people ask. You know, I hope that we can better our crochet knowledge and skill and just share resources and information. Um, I really spend a lot of time to make sure that the groups that I run are um, open enough uh, and interactive enough that you can ask questions like that and get some really good feedback and support. But I will also say that if you're part of an online community of any kind and you feel that um, it and if you feel like you are invited and welcome to ask questions and it's also a place where it's engaging and interactive and you get good feedback, go in ahead and ask those questions. Really, online communities are all about 
you know, how it makes you feel and what you're getting from it. So I hope that my communities do that for you. But if you do have a community that's already doing that for you, then definitely utilize it. That's a good resource. All right, Sandy Pittman's got some questions. First one is, what's the largest crochet project to date? I'm assuming you mean what's the largest crochet project that I've ever made to date. Um, and for me, that's probably, uh, probably a blanket. Um, I can't think of a larger one that I've made since the one that I'm about to tell you. So when I was in high school, um, we had art and my art teacher taught crochet. And so I crocheted a lot. And my art teacher had a wedding to go to and he asked me to make a king size blanket for um, the people who were getting married. And I was like, sure, I can do that. So he basically, I just made a bunch of granny squares that I sewed together. But he told, this is how he told me he wanted the blanket made. He gave me a skein of Red Heart Super Saver and he goes, I want you to make the granny square as big as one skein. And then I just want you to make as many squares as will fit on a king size blanket. And that's how big we're going to make it. And I think it was like, I don't know, it was, it was giant. Like I couldn't even put it in like, I don't even think I could put it in like a trash bag. Like it was that I had to like carry it to school, like with all of my arms. <laughs> it was huge. That was probably the biggest thing that I've ever crocheted. And I will not be doing that again. That was a one and done. Sandy's got another great question. She says, how many types of crocheting are there? Um, I really put a lot of thought into this question before because I wasn't really sure how to answer it. Um, I, I don't really know what you mean by types of crocheting. I mean, there are different stitches in crochet. And then on top of that, there's different specialty stitches, which are just variations, combinations, and placements of those basic stitches. And then on top of that, there's different crochet methods and techniques. So for example, you know, is Tunisian crochet, is it crochet or is it kind of in a lane of its own? Maybe that's a conversation for another day. But then there's also, you know, we look at things like mosaic crochet or tapestry crochet. And really we are using a crochet hook and we're using basic crochet stitches that we already know. So really those are just color work techniques. What do you do with the unused yarn, yarn color as you're not using it? So I, I think crocheting on its own is a type, much like knitting is a type or weaving is a type or loom knitting is a type. Because within crochet, really all the things that we do in crochet, again, Tunisian aside, I think that that's a type because it uses a different tool. The stitches look different. They're called different things. So I think that that's kind of in its own lane, my perception anyway. So yeah, in terms of types of crocheting, I, I think that crochet is a type and the possibilities that we have in terms of stitches and techniques is vast. Let me know what you guys think about that one. I'd love to hear. All right, I've got just a few more questions and the floor is gonna be open for everyone here. If you guys have any questions about crochet, I'll be opening the floor to that in just a little bit. Um, next question is from Lizzie. Lizzie says, I am really struggling to read crochet patterns. It's getting me down. If I see it in a video, no problems. I see the repeat rows, rounds, and I'm off. Is there a way to teach yourself how to read them uh, I'm going out of my head and it's stopping me from doing projects I want to do. Please help. So I already shared a resource with Lizzie and I'm going to share one with you guys too. At the American Crochet Association, we put together a video series that teaches you how to crochet from the ground up. So I think what a lot of people do, and this goes back to the first question we have, how can we make crochet better? It really is just about crochet knowledge and resources and information. Just because you can create stitches, um, it doesn't mean that you, you have a baseline of education in the crochet world, the baseline of knowledge and education in the crochet world. And the reason I say that is because you may, somebody may have taught you how to crochet and so you can recreate those stitches. But then whenever it goes to reading patterns, um, you know, it's difficult because maybe you don't know what the stitches are called, you don't know what counts as a stitch, you don't know how to count stitches in rows or in rounds, and you don't know how to read things like um, repeating stitch patterns, uh, things like that. So really, I think that's a matter of if, if there's any element of crochet that you're unfamiliar with, or 
if you feel stifled in any way, then I think that it's an excellent idea to go back to those basics. So really that's teaching yourself what basic stitches are and understanding how to create those basic stitches and understanding how to count those basic stitches and understanding how to create those basic stitches, not only in rows, but in joined rounds. And I think that from there, whenever you're learning those stitches, not only by watching a video in terms of how to create them and how to count them, but you're learning those stitches by reading a crochet pattern and following a chart, that is building a baseline of education in the crochet world. So you're taking those beginner skills and then you're building on them. So how do you, so from there, maybe you're reading a pattern and following a chart and watching a video to create more complex versions and variations and placements of stitches. And I think that by that method, you're not only going to learn how to read crochet patterns and charts, you're also going to understand how to create those stitches and count those stitches in a meaningful way so that you're not stifled and you don't feel held back in terms of what it is that you can create. So I do have uh, some video resources that I'm gonna share from the American Crochet Association. That way you can, you can get a baseline of education for those stitches. We also have a Learn How to Crochet workshop that gives you everything that you need so that you can build that baseline of education in crochet. So not only does it give you videos, it gives you instructions, it gives you charts, and it tells you exactly um, what you need to know in terms of the elements that you're creating. And that way you can go on to think for yourself and create anything that you see in crochet, whether you're reading a pattern or not. So I hope that that's a good resource for you guys, or I'm certain that's a good resource for you guys. And I hope that you check it out if you're struggling in any way, because I think that it will really be helpful. All right, last question. This is probably one of my favorite questions. I love this. Kate says, is there a place to get an aluminum size P crochet hook? I can only find plastic and the yarn doesn't slide easy, seems to stick. Now, um, I, I'm gonna answer this question with a question because um, in the crochet world, crochet hooks are made, um, crochet hooks are, measured, I should say. They have metric measurements and then they have the US measurements or, or what I'll call them. So metric measurements are those millimeters and what they're measuring is the cross section, the diameter of the crochet hook. So for example, um, a 2.25 millimeter crochet hook is a size B1 crochet hook. So all those numbers mean the same thing. 2.25 is a B or one crochet. All those numbers mean the same thing. So the reason I'm telling you this is that not every metric measurement has an equal um, crochet hook in terms of U.S. letters. And the really bizarre thing about this, I did not make these rules. This is all from, you know, industry leaders in the Craft Yarn Council, you know, the, the people who decide things, the decision makers. So a size P crochet hook can be a 10 millimeter a size P, uh, so it starts at 10 millimeter, it can be NP15, it can be 11.5 P16, it can also be a 15 millimeter, which kind of is in the realm of P and Q, which makes a whole lot of sense, right? So if you have a crochet hook that says P, I have one right here, it is plastic. This one says that it's a 10 millimeter crochet hook. So it's, it's on the smaller size of that spectrum, right? So if you need a size P crochet hook, I would suggest looking at the millimeter of exactly what you need. Do you need a 10 millimeter, 11.5, 12, 15? What millimeter hook do you need? And then do a Google shopping search for that millimeter. So um, I actually was able to find a few aluminum crochet hooks when I looked for the millimeter as opposed to just the letter. So hopefully that helps. Um, it is a little crazy that we use, you know, the, the metric in the U.S. and that there's, you know, three different characters that we can, you know, use to differentiate between those. And if you're ever stuck or you're not sure what you need or if you're looking for a resource, I'm gonna say go with the metric system because that's probably gonna give you more resources. And with that, those are all the questions that were asked in my group on this Ask Me Anything session. And now the floor is open. 
So questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, the floor is open. Let's see who's here. Maria's here watching. Elsie is here. Angela Morris. Diana Hassler. Andre is here. Gita is here. Michelle Farnsworth. Uh, Joe San is here. Janet Ann is here. Nikki is here. Denise is here. Ina is watching. Cassandra is here. Cassandra, I see your profile frame. I love it. Good job. Rachel is here. Elizabeth is here. Lori Younger is here. My good friend from Alaska. I was just talking about you a little bit. Uh, just saying how much I appreciate you. Good to see you here. Darlene is here. Monica Mercado with the awesome haircut is here. Melissa Ann is here. Kathy is here. Hildy is watching. Grista is here. And that's it. No crochet questions. You guys can ask me anything about crochet or yarn. And you guys choose not to. That's fine. You do you. <laughs> that's fine. No, I love these because I, I think that they are always great conversation starters. I don't always have an answer. I don't know all the things, but I love searching for things and I just love sharing my knowledge and resources. So hopefully you guys got a little bit of information today, but you're always welcome to either post questions here and I'll get to them. But if you are in one of my groups, I often post an ask me anything thread and I welcome any crochet questions to be posted there. And I love doing live videos like this just to make those questions conversations. All right, I do see one question or one comment here from Lori. Lori says, dang, I missed you talking about me. I need to go back and watch what I miss. I didn't name you, but when you see it, you'll know. You'll know. You'll know, believe me. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. It is a pleasure to be part of the crochet community. And again, I hope you guys learned something. So at least give me a shout out in the comments and I'll give you one. Peace, love, crochet, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.